I've lived a life of massive desire that uh, turn ultimately brought me to prison. I lived a life of crime and a life of like massive violence and negativity. So that's why I went to prison. Because I'll fucking shoot you in your motherfucking face if you got a problem. How do you define happiness? I don't really use that word. So like, I, don't, I don't believe happiness is like a thing. I believe in inner peace and contentment. I basically have $40,000, $46,000 in recurring payments every day if I didn't do anything. Every day? Every day if I didn't do anything, not one thing. Bueno, hoy vamos a grabar un vídeo. Estamos en Venetian Islands, donde están todas las mansiones básicamente de Miami. Vamos a ver a un millonario, obviamente, pero esta vez es un millonario distinto. Su historia es una auténtica locura. De hecho, estoy hasta tenso de conocerle. Mira, graba ahí que ese es su coche. Un Rolls Royce, lo tiene en la puerta y dice que tiene Lamborghinis, Porsche, Urus y vamos a ver qué nos tiene que contar dentro Wes. Hey, brother. Nice to meet you, man. Hell yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. Wow, this is crazy. <laughs> Like how much this this house cost? <laughs> so, people, we are here with uh, Wes Watson. Thank you, man, yeah. for for being in my channel. Oh, love it. This, this is what we love to do. I mean, it really it really puts me in a good place to share everything that I've known. I've lived a life of massive desire that uh, turn, ultimately brought me to prison. And so I found that my path was giving to people and, uh, and working with others that were like myself. For people to understand your, your situation, uh, right now you are living like the dream life, but you you never have it that easy or that, that uh, good in your life. You came from nothing, from, from the worst scenario, which is prison. Can you tell Uh, your context in that uh, uh, in that years uh, why you ended up in prison and um, how was your your experience there okay well I came from below the fucking bottom way below the bottom the penitentiary 10 years straight California prison state prison California state prison it's fucking gangland it's the most vicious violent negative place on earth and I was one of the worst and so I just consistently had to face myself in the mirror after I would make mistake after mistake. I would continually hurt people, do, um, you know, just heinous fucking crimes and acts and everything. You don't get in trouble once. You don't do something once and end up in prison for a decade. I lived a life of crime and a life of like massive violence and negativity. So it was time to pay that karma, that it was time to pay. And um, I got sent upstate for 10 years and um, I still was doing the same shit in prison, drug dealing in prison, prison, uh, violence, you know, stabbing people, fights, everything. Finally, well, there was two massive situations that changed my life once I got into prison. I got my first in-house stabbing on another inmate, which almost got me a life sentence. I swore I'd never do anything again after that. And then about eight months later, I, did, I used drugs for the last time in prison. This was 2014. The last time I drank or did any drugs, 2014. Those two situations were like the culminative point of my rock bottom, what changed my life. So how, how is the, the transition? How do you feel in, that, uh, in those days with, with everything that makes a click in your head, like in your mind, yeah. everything like make a switch? How is the switch? How it happens and how do you live that, uh, those days, those months of transition to, to the better life, to, to the change? The, the, the switch came in the form of a pen and paper. So I would always write in my journal, I would write in my notebooks, my thoughts and my feelings. I would empty out the trash, everything in my mind. Because in prison, you don't talk about this stuff to the other inmates, you know. You have to really, really sift through your thoughts and emotions and your feelings and, um, and through your life and your actions. So I was sitting, I would sit down and write a lot and I came across a quote that I wrote, which is, regret is your guideline. And um, it wouldn't leave my soul. It, would, it was etched in my heart. It was at the forefront of my mind. And um, every time I would regret something, I, I would just know that it was my guideline to remove it. So as I started to still conduct myself in negative ways, anything I regretted doing had to go. And since I'm an intense person, I took that very literal and just made it across the board. If I regretted eating this type of food, it's gone. If I regretted missing a workout or not going to working out hard enough, it changed. So ever since then, I used that massive regret as my guideline. I always tell people your conscience, which would be the voice inside you that initiates regret. Your conscience is telling you, hey, Sergio, you did something wrong, bro. And so the regret would ensue. But I'm always tell people your conscience is the authentic voice of God. And so if my conscience is telling me to remove something, well, then that's just the universe or God speaking to me. And so I just took that as that voice inside was a direct contact to above. And I said, I'm just going to listen. 
I've lived my life like that ever since. So you ended up uh, going out of prison and you started the change. So what were, uh, which were your first steps outside um, that drives you to the place you are right now? Well, I was, I was changing in prison for many years. Because okay. in 2014, I stopped all drugs, all alcohol, never drank or did drugs again. I had a massively strong personal development process the whole time in prison. Okay. A man in California prison, a white boy who's a gangster, a wood, a pecker wood, like I am in, in white, a white gang in prison, in California prison, then I have to program a certain way. I have to be up at a certain time. I have to work out every day. I have to do certain stuff for the our gang, our group. And um, that program was militant. You can't miss. You're getting your ass kicked if you miss a workout or worse. So, I mean, the whole thing was is that a man was measured by his ability to program. So I worked out five times a day. You know, I, I never missed a wake up time. I was up at 2.45 every morning and have been for 16 years. So I took it as, If a man's validated by his daily program in prison, I'm gonna run the hardest program. I'm gonna be the strongest. I'm gonna outwardly prove that I'm the most committed and the most disciplined and the most consistent because that was the money in prison. That was your status. So it just stuck with me from prison. And the way I program my habits, they felt better than any money because I had money before I went to prison. These habits, my new program felt better than anything I ever felt in my life. So I just kept running it in until I came out of prison. When I came out of prison, I just started sharing with people, but I honestly started sharing my mindset and my photos in about 2015 on Instagram while in prison. If you go to my page and scroll down, it's in black and white pictures. From prison? Yeah, in prison. And, and you, can, you can have a phone? No, you can't have a phone, but I would, I would make sure I had one. <laughs> and I, I did all black and white pictures till the day I got out. And when I got out, I did my pictures, in, my first pick in color. And these are like my black and white pictures from prison wow. that everybody could see. How you can, you are able to change all your environment? Because one thing people that are really um, dragged to is the, is the environment they have. And you say that the people you surround yourself with is the, is the equivalence of your, of your valuation as, you, as human. How you make the switch, uh, the switch of making new friends, good, better friends, uh, better influences for you? How do, how do you change that environment? Because I, think I, that I chose, key. yeah, I chose to become the leader. Okay. So even in prison, I would have the keys or I would have the block. Like I'd be the person who ran all my people, like the white guys. And then I would just, I would tell them, this is what we're gonna do. You know, you're not using drugs. You're not drinking. You're not fucking missing workouts. This is how we do our shit. Obviously they can go behind our back and use drugs and all that shit. And um, they would just feel stupid. I would teach them and guide them. But if they cause a problem with the other races from getting drugs from them, then we beat the fuck out of them. They, they get removed off that yard. Then they have to go to a PC yard, protective custody. And the thing is, is, I just set an example of the man that I trusted, the man that I would want to be, the man that I worked with, and I became the man that, that I, I'm impressed by. So I became that impressive man that I would listen to, and then I just made everybody listen to him. I made it attractive to do all these hard things each day. And that's what a lot of people can't do. They don't know how to really make something difficult seem desirable, and the only way that you can do that is to really desire the difficulties. So I switched my whole mindset. If I was relaxing too much, that felt like regression. If I was massively uncomfortable and pushing myself, that felt like progression. And so I had coupled in my mind comfort with regression and discomfort with progression. So I stayed hungry all the time. I worked out five times a day. Discomfort became my new comfort zone. And how do you end up with this kind of money? Like, how do you make your business work like this way? So I. From prison, I healed myself, got myself right, mentally, physically, spiritually, and that was the most powerful thing I'd ever done. I have money right now, I have a great life, I don't need money, and I need what I teach. So I teach how to be mentally, physically, and spiritually aligned to live a better life. So I teach people how to get, how to heal themselves and get mentally, physically, and spiritually aligned with their best self, their 10.0 self. I help them create their best version of self, and then I help them teach others to do that. So. Uh, how long have you been doing this coaching thing? Since I got out, so uh, five and a half years. In five and a half years, you, you build yourself like this way? Five, five and a half years, I went from making about 300 bucks a month to almost three million Fuck. a month. So you have to change and shift your, your mindset, right? Well, see, I, I always was very intense and I always operated with full, complete commitment. So that's why I went to prison because I'll fucking shoot you in your motherfucking face if you got a problem. And if I wanted to be a drug dealer, I'm gonna be the best drug dealer. So I went to prison for 10 years because I take shit serious. Whatever I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be the best at. Yeah. 
So as soon as I quit doing all the negative shit, then naturally I take shit serious and I'm gonna be the best at it. So once I start a post on Instagram and I say, I'm gonna be a fitness dude who helps people and I'm gonna work on mindset, training, nutrition, and spiritual beliefs and all this stuff, I'm gonna be the best at it. Same person, just a positive or negative pursuit. So that's the biggest thing is everybody doesn't believe that these people who are addicts, these people who are really, uh, really drawn to a darker life, a negative life, they don't realize why those are the strongest people who become the most successful. Mm. It's because they're really committed. They don't have an off switch. Mm. It's like a problem that, that we have, but that problem's a gift. Normal people, they would have just stopped when they were hurting themselves. We won't. We'll work harder until we're so tired we fall on the ground. We'll do more because we kind of have something wrong with us, but in a good way. If you're an entrepreneur and you're, you are an addict, you don't have that off switch. You'll work 20 fucking two hours. And ever, all the normal people with normal jobs are like, you're crazy, you do all this shit. I'm like, I'm not trying to be understood by normal people doing normal shit. <laughs> so that's the whole thing. When you get unrealistic with life, you start to have unrealistic goals. When you have an unrealistic life with unrealistic habits, you'll hit unrealistic goals like this. Like living in a $24 million house, owning four Rolls Royces, three Lamborghinis, Ferraris, I mean, multiple G-Wagons, I mean, I have 12 exotic cars all paid for. I have a, a 22,000 uh, square foot house, uh, my nine acre lot, 16,000 square foot home in San Diego, 10,000 square foot house in Miami. And um, I live a pretty fucking crazy life. But how did I do that? I woke up every day just trying to be the best man I could ever be and not break character. I never once, I never fucking once made it about some fucking money. I'm probably the only person on Instagram who's never missed. Since I started uploading on YouTube, Monday, Wednesday, Friday in 2019 or 18, I've never missed a video, ever. Not once, 8 a.m. upload, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every day since 2018 or 19. So I have this question about your daily routine because I think it's, it's insane, like 2.45 every day, every day don't miss a day and if you can tell us and, and go uh, through the, all the day routine we, uh, you have daily uh, what will it be i mean I, I like to operate from something called the inconvenience factor i'm massively inconvenienced and underslept i never have enough sleep i never have enough food i'm never just fully making myself comfortable so i'm always operating at less than my full capacity and people think that makes you less no that makes you more that makes you lethal so if I'm always getting up early and I'm tired, if I'm always working on not at not an optimal level, I adjust to that level. So when everything is optimal, I work way higher than everyone. So I mean, some nights I get plenty of sleep. I get to bed 8.30, 9, and I get up at 2.45. That's plenty of sleep for me. Some nights I go to bed at 12 o'clock, get up at 2.45. Whoa. So, but last, last night I didn't even really sleep. I looked fucking like I didn't get any sleep. But I, I stay up all night now doing sales more than I did in Cali because 12 o'clock here is nine o'clock in California. And I, you know, I, I make about, you know, 70 to $200,000 a day. I basically have $40,000, $46,000 in recurring payments every day if I didn't do anything. Every day? Every day if I didn't do anything, not one thing. I set standards that are very, very unrealistic, but they're not unrealistic from my trajectory. They'd be unrealistic for a normal person to say, I'm gonna make 30,000 a day, yeah. and they've never made three. And uh, what advice uh, would, you be, uh, would you give, for example, a guy la like me, an entrepreneur from social media, who wants to increase uh, the, uh, his revenue, for example? Uh, it's not how, it's who. Who, okay. So everybody thinks how they're gonna make more money. Who makes more money? Like I always tell people, your first YouTube video is gonna suck. Yeah. Your first Instagram post is gonna suck. My first YouTube video. Whoa. My second got 3.7 million. Like, why did mine go viral right off the bat? I went viral right off the bat because I had done 10 years of personal development, 11 years of personal development. So when people heard my message, the authenticity of it, the depth of it, and the, the, what I was sharing, it went viral. And that's, everyone should work on them more than they try to find out how they should make the who that is valuable. Now, some guys are very jacked, they're in good shape, but they can't explain it. They can't articulate it. They can't get people to want to do it. So they're not valuable. There's no value there, it's only value to them. You have to make value to the world. I really told everyone that's our life's purpose. So everybody I know who's successful, they healed themselves and then taught others to heal themselves in the same way. After your, your experiences in these last, last 20 years of your life, um, how do you define happiness in your own terms right now? I don't really use that word. 
So like, I don't, I don't believe happiness is like a thing. I believe in inner peace and contentment. Okay. And I, I, I really get to my place of inner peace and contentment when I'm not desiring anything. So when you're on purpose, on your purpose, you can't be in a state of desire. Desires are very painful because those are unmet expectations. I live in a state of purpose and I really attract everything I want in my life. Desire leads to boredom. Boredom leads to desire, leads to vices. I'm never bored. You can't be bored when you're on your purpose. So really, I've kept it really simple. Okay, so that's it. Uh, you have the Instagram of, of Wes uh, down in the description. Can we show the, the house and yeah, the cars? Yeah, check it out. Let's, let's see, let's see it. So how many cars do you have in total? Uh, here I got, I got four here. I have a Lamborghini SVJ. I have a Rolls Royce Ghost 2023, brand new. I have a Brabus G-Wagon 2023. I have a 2021 SVJ Lamborghini, and then I have a 2022 uh, Rolls Royce Phantom. Let's see them, let's see them. There's not much parking in Miami on the Venetian <laughs> Islands. This is the nicest place in Miami. Then we have this new Ghost I just bought. It's beautiful. It's a lime green interior. This is a more, more expensive than the Phantom? Oh no, this is 390, the Phantom 750. Whoa. And how do you find the difference between them, like in the in the feeling? Ah, this one's just cool to have. I just like <laughs> I just like the colors, so I bought it because I like the colors. <laughs> so there is the Brabus. Yeah. Wow, this is light blue. Miami blue interior, Tiffany blue. And then you have the Phantom yeah. here. This is the this is the biggest rolls they make. Cool, cool man. Yo he pasado por estas casas eh, con, por fuera con los coches y es una auténtica locura el lujo que tienen. O sea, fijaros las vistas que tienen estos. Increíble, estamos literalmente en la mejor zona de Miami. Estas 130.000 euros en alquiler. O sea, imaginaros el, el nivel. Y o sea, es una auténtica locura conocer a la gente como Wes. Aprendes un montón de cosas. Es bastante impactante su historia, por supuesto. O sea, no, no voy a engañar a nadie. De hecho, a mí esta me, me parece impactante porque conocer a, la a esta persona en, en, en persona y te cuenta las historias que ha hecho y su trayectoria, la verdad es que es muy impactante. Entonces, nada, hasta aquí el vídeo de hoy. Espero que os haya gustado, espero que os haya impactado su historia, su casa, lo que él, lo que él ha conseguido en su vida. Y echa un ojo al resto de vídeos de Miami. Ya sabes. Yo, mi cambio de vida eh, no fue tan exagerado como el suyo, pero sí que cambié mi vida porque vine desde un punto en el que no tenía claro qué hacer con mi vida, no sabía qué dedicarme, no sabía en qué era bueno, no tenía claro qué iba a hacer, pero algo me dijeron y me dijeron, oye, si empiezas a construir ya tu marca personal, si empiezas a construir y a documentar tu camino en YouTube, te va a venir muy bien de cara al futuro. Y eso fue lo que hice hace, hace cinco años y medio y el resto es historia. Me cambió la vida por completo, pude vivir un montón de experiencias, conocer un montón de personas y la verdad es que para mí fue, una, fue un antes y un después en mi vida y es lo que yo intento contar al mundo. Así que si te gusta todo esto, si te apetece, eh, aprender más acerca de YouTube para crecer tu negocio o para tú vivir de ello, que sepas que siempre regalo un ebook de 35 páginas que me lo ocurre todo lo que pude con nueve formas para poder ganar dinero con YouTube. Te lo descargas abajo en la descripción, primero en la descripción y lo tienes hecho para ti. No me enrollo más, espero que os haya gustado mucho el vídeo, nos vemos en la próxima y hasta entonces os vigilo y haz el cambio. Adiós.